All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Market View Commentary for the last Monday of, um, of October here. We again have a busy, busy week for the S&P 500 earnings. I believe this week it is 16.2%. But for the life of me, I was trying to find where I found that. And I'm I'm not finding it. I thought I had it. And I'm looking for it. And I'm just not finding it. So that is poor to be unprepared when I should be better prepared than this. So I, I again it is a bigger amount. It's a bigger amount and this week we run out of we run out of so I'm gonna do it a little differently for reporting. We run out of banks and move to industrials and technology for the next two weeks. So again, in this week you're gonna have uh, Microsoft, we had Tesla last week. We'll have Amazon, Google, and Apple. So we're going to hit those big, big four are going to be coming out this week. Actually, it's Google, Meta, Apple, Amazon, and Microsoft. So we got five of the big ones that are coming this week. It means, and I guess what it means is after hours market movements based on a handful of stocks and it's just I, that's that's the way we're looking that's what's going to move things in this coming week for the most part it actually means we're going to have a better than expected week and that is something I had not planned for. If we go down to where will the S&P end in November, I had this as October, and I thought we would be down roughly a two percentage points. And all I was coming up with was we'd be down two percentage points because it seemed like we had run too far too fast and we just didn't have any of those big movements uh, to, to move us forward. And I'm trying to get my screenshots. Again, as I said, I'm running a little bit late. When I looked at everything, that's the NASDAQ. Let's, as we looked at our chart, this is the problem with guessing, right? Rolled up, rolled down, rolled up, rolled down, rolled sideways, down. I was seeing the roll right here. Well, my thought is we'd kind of come down here and test the 50-day. We did not. We started rolling up higher. And there's more gradual rolls. In all honesty, we could have a really good next couple of two weeks until we run into the election. Even possibly with the election, it maybe doesn't matter who wins. It looks like uh, the market just wants some type of oh, uh, some type of confidence or direction on on. That's not what I'm looking for. The market wants uh, the uncertainty of who's going to be our president. They want that taken care of. They want to know who it is, and we probably will have a pretty nice run into the end of the year based on that uncertainty that uncertainty of who's going to be our president being you know we'll know who it is well we should know who it is right <laughs> we should know who it is we don't know for sure but we should know who our president is assuming to a certain degree it's run it's a runaway election if it's not 
we could have some problems. That's going to be the short answer. We could have some problems if if it's not a runaway election. After hours market movements, uh, we've got Google tomorrow. I should might as well just show it to you. Earnings. Why do I just don't have them in here? So the short answer is got to do those. Man, I did a horrible job of preparing today. So looking at them, we've got first eye, we've got flow serve, we got Rambus, we have VF Corp, and we have uh, waste management, and we've got Ford. Those were the big ones for today. Tomorrow, huge. Uh, BP, Gildwin, DH, Horton, JetBlue, uh, McDonald's, which they've got to say what's going on with their, their E. coli problem, PayPal, uh, Pfizer, Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, EA, First Solar, Google L will report, Chubb will report, Visa will report. Uh, someone just typed a question in or a comment. I'll answer that in just a second. Wednesday, Caterpillar, Eli Lilly, Garmin, Hess reports, uh, Humana reports. I'd really love to see those ones tank. IMAX reports. Um, Heinz Craft Company reports. Um, I cannot read my Wingstop reports. Can't read my own writing sometimes. Uh, Amagen reports. That'll be a big one. Clorox reports. eBay reports. HubSpot reports. I, I do this one because my brother works for HubSpot. MGM Grand reports, Microsoft reports, obviously that'll move markets. Roku, Starbucks, they shouldn't do very good. Twilo reports and Meta reports after hours. Thursday is another big one. If I can just get my paperwork here. Altria reports. Budweiser reports, a very important one. Bristol Myers, LNG, the natural gas, CMS reports, Conical Phillips, L, Elk, that's kind of funny. Uh, Granger Worldwide reports, Hilton reports, International Papers reports, MasterCard reports, Uber reports. I'm gonna have a busy week. Wendy's, Amazon, uh, El Polo Loco, Intel, which is doing awful. Juniper, the opposite of Intel. Skyworks, uh, X Steel, and Apple will report after hours. And then our last ones: Cardinal Health, uh, Chevron. Dominion and Exxon Mobil. Kind of energy finishes off that day. Uh, let's see what the comment was. The e. coli burger, you got it. When you take a look at the economic reports, not much happened today, but we've got ADP employment with GDP numbers on Wednesday, as well as pending home sales. Uh, PCE for Thursday, which will give an idea if we're going to get a rate cut again. Whether it'll be 50 basis points, 25 basis points. Okay, just do the whole 100 so they don't have to do any in December, right? Personal spending, personal income will be important. And then we have our average work week, non-farm, and private payroll numbers. It's really a big week for economic reports and a big week for, for um, earnings. If you were to ask me where are we going to end up for November, I don't know. 
the honest answer is I don't know. This will tell me a lot this week. This week could cause us to go back down that 2.2% we're up for the month. We could lose our all of our gains in the next four days with a couple of these big mag seven stocks just laying an egg. If they laid an egg, if you saw Microsoft lay an egg, uh, if you saw Google, Amazon, Apple, Meta, although Meta should really take off nicely, uh, if they laid an egg, we're done. The gains for the month are going to tank. That's why we do have some protection on. I know you could say, Kevin, what are you doing with Micron? Well, we're kind of getting our butt hand to us a little bit as it moves back and forth, but there are other positions that are offsetting it. Uh, all right. Um, so, very important. Jeez. Don't need to capitalize, and I'm not yelling at you. Very important economic reports this week. We had six weeks of gains, but we took a loss last week. Just a slight one, wasn't enough. In fact, if you take a look, I should really bring in our, our charts again. Let me get our charts in here. We gave back a little bit last week so we could pull off being overbought. The Dow, we actually went negative, but we're back just above the, the median line. Technically, we still consider the down industrial averages negative or bearish because we don't have our crossovers on our MACD. We don't have our crossovers on any moving averages. We are getting a bounce off of the, the willingness percent R, which is a medium statistics. It just means bigger money is looking to get into to the market, but it probably won't make any big size bets until you see uh, the election come around. Uh, pretty sideways, but we pulled off on the S&P last week. 1564, it's kind of 5,700, we're only at 58. So yeah, we're, I think we're at about 2.4% gain for, for uh, for October, very easy to lose that and come back and test the 50 day based on some of the big MACDs. Still are considered bullish. And then when you go to the, the NASDAQ, again, I apologize that I didn't do a better job of having these all prepped. Uh, we also had a pullback, so we have room to grow. We have room to move higher without being in oversold territory. It just, uh, I don't think the market's gonna make a bet on the markets one way or the other. Uh, I do think they're more interested in a certain individual winning the election versus the incumbent. And I, it's kind of funny, uh, as I was talking to people around Utah, I go to a CEO I don't know what you call it, just a CEO for the state of Utah, uh, Mixer would be the best way to say it. And I found it interesting that so many people out here are kind of chicken, especially when you have Mike Lee as your senator, who's been a very staunch Republican supporter for Trump. Uh, most of the people out here, in all honesty, uh, even CEOs are saying in private, They'd like to see the orange guy win, but they won't go out and, and make a stance on it, which I think is pretty its pretty chicken that you wouldn't say or be willing to say who you might vote for as the CEO of a company. It is a personal decision. Just because the CEO votes Republican or Democrat doesn't mean the company is a Democrat or Republican company. It should just be voted on for what will most best help out that individual, uh, what will best help out their industry that they're in, let's face it, you're voting for the person that you feel is gonna help you out 
the most. If it goes with helping the country out the most, that is probably a bonus. But uh, some people just don't know. Man, I did not even put the big picture in here. Uh, the big picture this week, I found very interesting. One, because it's new and they've been about it two weeks off from having it in here. And all they're saying is that there's a lot of economic data, but the uh, what it all means is, and again, they're back to the hard landing, which is not correct. The Federal Reserve is working to avoid the hard landing. If you ask me, the Federal Reserve has already missed the hard landing. Questions remain as whether it can do that given the lag effect of prior rate hikes. The economic data, however, remains on the Fed side for the most part, which is exactly what the stock market wants to see. The preference is apparent to the fact that the S&P 500 and NASDAQ Composite have held near record highs, even as market rates have moved up appreciably since September 18th rate cut. The relative strength implies the stock market is operating predominantly with the belief that U.S. growth outlook is intact, which in turn makes it believe the earnings growth outlook is intact. That makes it all the more important for the economic data to continue to surprise us in a good way. Uh, here's what I'm going to tell you. The last rate cut on September 18th, uh, the market gave back, for the most part, those gains. If you were to ask me, yes, I would bet that we would see a 50 basis point rate cut happening again. In, uh, uh, in, I'm fixing this, uh, here in November, because the rate cut that they gave us did not hold. Even though it's 50 basis points, it didn't hold. Interest rates went back up. Yeah. It's like the inflation pressures did not give us the benefits of a rate cut. If I was to ask you guys, what do you think? What do you think our, our next rate cut's gonna be? Will it be 25 basis points? Will it be 50? If they do 50, they may not do a rate cut in December or it only would be 25 basis points. What do you think our November rate cut's gonna be? If you were to guess, what would our rate cut be for November? Uh, we got two that say 25. Mon Stewart say 25. William says 50. I'm going to be on the William side. I'm going to say 50 because their rate cut did not have the effect that it was supposed to be. Jim Collar says 50. Yet Lee says 25. We're a mixed bag right here. We're split three for 50, three for 25 right now. It's uh, it's really uncertain, right? Uh, the problem is that the Fed is mixed too. Yeah, they can't go too fast, right? Or that means that they've blown it and they've held interest rates too high for too long, which I don't have a problem with going too fast. It's just correcting, it's making an overcorrection on the correction that should have been made a while ago. But again, it seriously is affecting our treasury sales. We have half of our treasuries that are not being purchased. Half of the treasuries we tried to sell this year were not being purchased. I don't know if they're purchased by the FOMC, but their balance sheet's coming down, which means in, in essence, maybe we're not funding our government this year like we should, which will create a bigger deficit than expected. Maybe they don't count that and they hide it and just print more money. Um, who knows? But it's going to be a big deal the middle of November. I'll tell you, if Trump gets elected, he'll push for bigger cuts sooner. Um, 
I think if uh, Harris gets elected, uh, if she's smart, she'll probably just stay out of it. Whatever happens, happens. It'll be interesting to to see who wants to, I don't know, who's going to cheerlead what's happening. One more thought. Christmas rally looks intact. So be ready to let the stocks run. It's very hard for me to, sit, to see a situation where stocks won't run in the near future. The market's getting certainty on who their president's going to be. Earnings are still good. They're not great, but they're good. And everything seems to be status quo to keep moving higher. So once we get through this earnings, we're probably going to do a lot of letting things run all the way up to Christmas until we see the need to add protection back on. Apple's dates are right there. Apple's dates. Earnings dates are right there. We've cut a lot of them out, but uh, big ones are coming up, obviously, this week. Apple, Google, Meta. Microsoft is in there that I don't have. Amazon is in here that I don't have. So you've got five of the mag sevens that are reporting and Netflix did phenomenal. Nvidia doesn't report until much later. So it's not in here in this list. I should put it here on this list. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just, uh, I'll put Nvidia in here. And I'll find out. I'm pretty sure they report the end of of November, but I will. Well, let's find it. I should have it in there. I don't. Bad job of preparing today, Hurley. Should do a better job than this. It was just a ridiculously busy day. I see the estimate for being 10:20. And it is estimated. Okay. Boy, I've gone through a lot today. Uh, we've gone through our charts. Don't know where we're going to end in November. I wouldn't even guess. Protect the earnings of someone for election next week. Um, some interesting articles. Um, Jeff Bezos killed the Washington Post endorsements of Kamala Harris. Uh, Mr. Bezos has been a staunch uh, Democrat voter. Yet for some reason, when uh, it sounds like the Washington Post overstepped their bounds, uh, he uh, they they said no, it's it's not correct. And so it's something that uh, that I just found interesting that someone that's been a staunch Democrat uh, supporter does not want to be known as a endorsement of Harris. Please read through the article. Uh, it's just interesting. I, I don't know what to tell you other than that. Here's what's changed in the Fed statement. Uh, last Wednesday, they published their their statement, and I found an interesting article with what's crossed out, what's been changed. Please read through this to give you some idea of where we might see our rate cut in the next two weeks. And last but not least, Goldman forecasts just a 3% annual return for the next decade. So what does that mean? If you're to say, hey, for the next decade, we're only looking at a 3% annual return, what does that mean if you hear that? Does it mean you're gonna bail out of the market? Does it mean the market's dead? No one wants to comment? Place about the same, find better investments because they're confused. Ooh, I really like that one. 
it comes back down to a stock mix a stock picker's market. You've got to find the undervalued stocks. And that's what we're doing here. I talk about a, a, a Buffett type of, of what you're looking for to invest in. <laughs> that means you got your work cut out for you. There you go. You've got to find those stocks that are undervalued, that have those big opportunities to go higher. That's exactly what it means. And that's what, uh, you know, that's what the next decade looks like, according to Goldman. Uh, JP Morgan thinks it's going to be a little bit better, but it's funny. If that's true, it's shocking that they're still putting people into mutual funds with 3 to 7% charges on it on markets that only grow 3%. Don't get stuck into those mutual funds. They're a waste of money. With that said, what questions, um, what questions do you guys have for me that I can answer for you tonight? Sorry, I ran out of time getting this completely pre prepared. I should have had it done a little bit better. But what questions do you guys have for me that I can answer for you tonight? Great question. Um, so the comment was just made, what do I think about the MAG-7? So if I was to look at the stocks they're reporting, Google, I think, will go significantly higher. Google could be somewhere between 185 to 200 by the end of the year. Meta, I think Meta is going to knock it out of the park. If I was going to go directional on a trade, I might throw a leap call or two on Meta. You can do a cheap one that's $50 out of the money. Um, but you put a couple hundred bucks in, maybe $1,000 in. It could triple or quadruple in value overnight. I might put one at the money. Might be more expensive. 32 to 3500 bucks. But I would think Meta could run up to... to you know, 650 again, uh, or 650. Yes, I don't know if again would be the right way to say it, but I think Meta could could knock it out of the park. If I was to look at Amazon and Microsoft, um, Microsoft will probably meet or slightly beat, and it won't be good enough. Amazon, uh, I'm not a fan of them on Thursday. I think they're going to meet or slightly beat, and will probably fall. Apple, I don't know what to tell you. They will probably beat, and they can beat significantly. And they're still, I, I just don't see the, the growth after the market. But this is supposed to be Apple's best quarter. This is when Apple runs. People are excited for their, their, their sales coming into Christmas. Their guidance is usually very good. This is their best quarter when the market and an Apple price stock price seem to move in tandem and higher. Uh, January is their worst. So Apple, I, if you believe historical trends, you think Apple would run higher. So what I'm telling you right now, Google and Apple should run higher. Meta should really run higher. Microsoft and Amazon will probably beat or beat slightly, and I think those two get punished. And I'm going off of last earnings. Yes, Google got punished for for beating, but Google also runs into a Christmas rally. Amazon does as well, but there's no margins there. I don't think Microsoft runs into a Christmas rally like you see for Apple, for Meta, and for uh, Google. So good question. That's uh, that's what I'm thinking of the MAG-5 <laughs> out of the MAG-7 that are reporting this week. A uh, great question, William. And what was the other one? Oh, Mary. Even though I think they're going up, would I still add protection? So, yes. On any stock positions, we're still adding protection. We're not not adding protection on stocks. I'm just saying on Meta. 
uh, an at the money December leap call, slightly out of the money December leap call on Meta might be a great opportunity to run to make some good money on a good earnings event. I might even go thirty forty dollars out of the money to like a January on a Meta long call. That's I would assume cheaper. You know, maybe you're paying a quarter for the you know the two maybe maybe two dollars and fifty cents that uh could really take off with a fifty dollar jump on their stock price if you look at where meta's been that's where i'm uh that's really where i'm kind of making my decision on them where just take a look at ch a chart on meta so maybe do a 5e maybe do a 610 look at where meta can take off from earnings well kevin their last two earnings they kind of taint you are a hundred percent right if you look in february the earnings went from 400 to 450. uh april earnings they went from 570 down to 450 but then started higher uh, their last earnings in August or end of July uh, went up big, then came back down for three days, and then it took off higher. So, uh, yes, give yourself two to three months. Go out to January. But I I'm just trying to think out loud. 580, December, January, a 610, maybe even a 620 call to make it cheap. All righty. Uh, any other questions there? Going once, going twice. All right, guys. Hey, you guys have a wonderful, uh, a wonderful uh, week. Enjoy. Ooh, Tony, I'd get on it. Enjoy your Halloween on Thursday. Last day of the month. Uh, thoughts on Disney? Disney has another multi-billion, well, a billion-dollar movie coming up. And their movies are back on track like they used to be. I've always said Disney's uh, bread and butter is their amusement parks. Their cash cows are their movies. They're doing really good with Disney+. Plus. I mean, they made ridiculous amounts of money. But it's an expensive, uh, it's, a, it's a really expensive business model. And Disney's not come up other within The Mandalorian. They've not come out with mainstream media shows. Uh, the Tracker just came out. You had Yellowstone that came out on, on, uh, on Paramount+. Plus. Uh, you've got the Terminal List on Netflix. Prime Video has a couple. Apple has a couple. They've created their own shows that rival network TV. You haven't quite seen that on Disney. Disney Plus is not giving you above and beyond type of entertainment. Disney Plus right now is saying, hey... You guys love us for our Disney shows. We're giving you that. You love us for for uh, for uh, Star Wars. We're giving you that. And to be honest with you, they haven't come up with another. Hey, we're all that in a bag of chips. Hey, we've got this new series coming on. Um, it's just really not there. As I look at the newly added, uh, they just don't have, although the old man's there, yeah, they just, they haven't carved out a niche yet where they've got their own shows. They're, they're adding some of the other shows, but they're not adding like the Mandalorian, they're not coming up with their new mainstream media 
shows that uh, that are out there. So I just, yeah, I'm sorry, I just don't see Disney getting a whole lot of love for their their Disney Plus, their their online services. I think it still goes back down to their old uh, cash cow being the movies. And they're lining up again. I, I believe it's another uh, Marvel American uh, Captain America movie that's another literally billion dollar movie set in the works. So good question. All right, guys. Now, are there any other questions? Going once, <laughs> going twice. All right, guys. Hey, enjoy your Halloween. Give kids a bunch of uh, candy to make them fatter and obese and to give them uh, more cavities. Doctors and dentists love parents for what we do. But enjoy your Halloween. We will not have a Halloween webinar, uh, Trade Findings and Adjustments, this week. Uh, I'm busy traveling, and Keith has some little kids and is busy. So we're going to cancel that. But that's what I'm telling you right now. Uh, a meta leap call would be an ideal position to be in. All right, guys, take care. I look forward to seeing you next Monday. Have a good week. Be safe. Enjoy Halloween, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.